Hey everyone, it's George. I'm back with uh, new spirituality, and uh, you know it's been many months since I last posted, but that doesn't mean that I've kind of checked out and haven't been working on anything. Um, certain things have to just develop in their own time, and many of the ideas and that I was working with at Sacred Geometry before are kind of in an evolving process. And now over the past week or two weeks, things have started to come together. So I'm pretty excited to share a little bit on uh, the Golden Spiral, Fibonacci Spiral, the Crystal Spiral, and a new spiral that I'm uh, kind of happening upon here and excited to bring that forward and um, talk a little bit about what all this uh, spiraling, uh, spiraling energy is all about. So let's, um, like, like normal, I'm going to do the uh, slide show and uh, talk through things in the PowerPoint. And um, I don't have as many props as I did in the past, but I did bring along my new um, Burdock creations, um, which they may come in handy a little bit. It's very cool to uh, get to show these off. I know I've sent some videos and showed people, but you've got the tetrahedron and here's the big uh, star tetrahedron that I did out of all these uh, burdock burrs. So <clears throat> they, uh, they might become useful, um, but the main thing today is really talking about the spiral and the cube. So let me jump into the screen share and let's see where I'm off. So. Okay, so this is a, an image that I just posted a few days ago onto Facebook, and uh, it's quite a fascinating image for me because it's not based on any spiral that uh, I've seen in any of the literature or seen before uh, written about. It's, um, it's kind of based on this uh, crystal spiral, which I'll get into in just a moment. And, you know, when I put the pieces together, so basically I took this same um, cube shape here on the left and did another uh, seven cubes that you see, one here in the middle and then the six around it. And you can kind of visualize that there would be one behind. So it would, of course, look, you know, three dimensional like this square cube here, but you're looking at it from the top like this, you know, at the pinnacle here looking down. So. It's basically a bigger cube consisting of four smaller cubes, but now it has all that dynamic um, energy in it. And without the, uh, or, or the spiraling pattern, without the uh, cubes in there, you know, here is just a spiral image um, just on its own. And it's very similar to the golden spiral. So here that is on the, or the, the Fibonacci spiral. You know, when I overlay these and have some more images, you'll see that this, a very similar type of spiral. And uh, that really fascinated me because um, I didn't think that this would produce a similar spiral to that. So let me uh, continue on. I don't believe this will be a very long video. I really just want to get to the point about the crystal spiral. Um, that was uh, introduced to me by a friend on Facebook. And you know, last year I was kind of looking at it a little bit, trying to discover how it was created and what the importance and significance is. So for those of you who are not familiar with the crystal spiral, uh, it's actually seems to be quite heavily influenced or part of um, called the Ascension process. A lot of spiritual sites are looking at this spiral as a better spiral than the uh, Fibonacci spiral that we have here on the left. Because of the system of how it's created here on the bottom, the main difference is that when this spiral is created, it's based on these cubes or squares. You know, they're not cubes in this drawing, but they're basically squares turned, you know, 45 degree, 45 degree, 45 degree until you go out to the biggest one over here and the smaller one in here. And it starts with a one and then it adds up sequentially. One plus one is two plus four plus eight, all the way up to 16. But it's including the zero point at the center. And it always includes that in the addition, which this little bar, bar chart here is showing you. In order to get 256, you have to add up all the previous numbers of 128 to get to the 256 mark. 
So in the, um, the spiritual way of thinking about that, um, which makes a lot of sense, is that the source, the zero, and the one are always included into the mathematics from the very beginning. So it never loses its connection to the root of the source. And you can start this spiral at the center of the uh, grid here. Now the Fibonacci spiral, for instance, um, I mean, it's found all in nature and um, this spiritual, the spiritual community that is really um, thinking and using the, the crystal spiral as a, as a better way of looking at uh, how life is, they, uh, they're, they're pointing out that this spiral here doesn't originate at the center point and it only does for the zero and the one. And then as you go on, you're adding one plus one equals two, but you're never then including the previous numbers because as you create the sequence, you know, eight and 13 equal 21. So you get the next box and 21 and 13, you get 34, 34 and 21, and you get that. And there's no question that this spiral shows up all in nature. And uh, it was a little baffling to me um, how much this spiritual community that is uh, a strong proponent towards this crystal spiral um, looks at the Fibonacci spiral and, and calls it the, the fib of no chi. They call it, um, you know, the, the flower of life is called the daisy of death. You know, the, all these uh, kind of abrasive terminology um, to describe the pattern. So, you know, that got me curious because I've done a lot of work with the Golden Spiral and uh, Fibonacci Spiral and Metatronic work in the past. So I started taking a look at the Crystal Spiral to see what it will reveal. And I'm really going to be fascinated. I think you'll be fascinated if you stick in here to find out how these two things may be more related than we think. So just uh, as we go on here, I'm... Uh, Pulling in this slide just to give you a, a visual concept of uh, what the uh, cube looks like from different angles. So here is the image that got me inspired and really helped me figure out how to make the uh, the crystal spiral on my own. So you know this essentially is this cube that would fit right in here. And when I started looking at this, I said, well, okay, it's squares. Um, they're not talking about it as a cube. I haven't heard that mentioned. And if it, to me, the, the spiral, if you're just rotating that square, it's basically flat, right? I was asking myself as I was looking at it, is like, where is the dimensionality in this, uh, this, this uh, new system here that they're talking about in this spiral. So where is the 3D view of that? Because I know once you take a cube and you're looking at it flat like this on one face and you turn it and face it this way, well, it's the same cube, but it looks like a hexagon. And you know, once you create a hexagon like that, you put a bunch of hexagons together, you can start creating the flower of life pattern, right? So. I started to wonder about, well, what if I took the crystal spiral and changed it so it was then just matching the normal hexagonal image? Because I, I don't perceive that this, this square view here, and they put a human being in here, is just a flat plane that goes through us kind of like this, and the spiral just starts at our heart center and just comes up around to the top of our head. So I started saying there must be some three-dimensionality to this. So in the image over here, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is a cube hexagonally. And then inside that, of course, is always the star tetrahedron. And in my other videos, I describe the star tetrahedron as being a, a, a sheath around our body, a sphere around us. And that the point of it, which is actually the point of the red, that's actually if you're looking down at the top of your head, down through your feet, which you don't see below here, but this would be around your shoulders. So this is a top view, okay? And I'll show you what the side view is and, uh, and the, uh, the square view that we have over here as we go on. So, you know, when we combine all these together, we've got the, sphere, the spheres within this, right? And once you turn the sphere on its side here, 
uh, it loses contact with the edge of the box. I'm going to show you something here in just a sec. I hope it shows up on here because um, the inner sphere is really interesting what it does. And I'll show you why that was important in just a moment. But, you know, here is, you know, the cube. It's got eight spheres. One, here's seven you see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one's behind it. So now on this image, the square one, well, we have one, two, three, four, and all now you have to do is visualize that there are two more, uh, four more behind these four. You're just looking at it from a certain angle. So I started to wonder about this crystal spiral and the three-dimensionality of it is like, are we, is this being presented of just looking through one angle, you know, one view to get the spiral, but what about the three-dimensionality and the other views? So I knew I had some material that would help me out based on all my previous studies and research that I've been doing around these questions that could help me piece this together. And that's what we're going to go into is what that crystal spiral looks like when we rotate it from the square view. Now, let me just uh, stop the share real quick. And I hope I could see this on here because it's really neat about the cube and the ball, right? So in this is a a little, today I, I was like, oh, I've got this little plastic ball, a, a plastic um, square. I was like, wow, my son and I were just playing with the bouncy ball the other day. So I was like, maybe that ball will fit in there. And it just fits perfectly. So here's the ball, right? And so there's the square view. And this kind of tripped me out for a little while. I was really kind of like, wow, when you turn it like this towards you, right? All of a sudden, we know that the um, that sphere is still in contact with the side edges of the sphere, right, right here. But it looks like it's just floating in in space there, right? So it doesn't look like it's touching the edges. And I, in working on those drawings, I wanted to get this totally accurate. You know, make sure that that little sphere in the middle would fit just like that. And then, of course, if you turn it this way. Now that's as if it were facing up and down, and that's now if we're spinning it around this way with the top, like a north and a south, and that's spinning around, or if it was wobbling and spinning around, it'd be something like that. So you've got that sphere in that. Now the crystal spiral view is, in my opinion, if it's three-dimensional object, which I'm hoping they, they think it is, because if it's not a three-dimensional object, it's just a 2D reality that's being presented there. Um, that's the view, right? And you're just going like this, and there's a bigger one around that, and it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until, you know, it just blossoms back and forth, just rotating on 45 degree angle. And I said to myself, well, what if I do that with this, you know, the hexagon shape or the diamond, what I call the diamond shape? So that is the root of the exploration. And now these are the, um, the findings in coming up here in a minute. You may remember to share this screen because um, in the past I've used to go on and just talk and then realized I hadn't shared it. So there we go. Should be coming on. Okay, perfect. So I hope you're all following along with me here and um, I'm gonna tie this all back into the Fibonacci spiral too. But here I just wanted to, show you like this is a bit of my process about how I'm going about discovering and creating the images we're going to see. It almost looks kind of like uh, a Star Wars, beginning of Star Wars, where they roll the long credits and it starts out really small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it kind of descends towards you, you know, and the rebel forces are up against this this time and et cetera, right? That's kind of what it like uh, looked like to me when I set it up like this. But um, this is how the cubes are in the crystal spiral, how they uh, get bigger uh, in relationship to one another. So remember, I've got that little yellow sphere in there. And in the past, I've created all these views, right? I created the hexagonal view. I created the diamond view. And I said, okay, well, I'll just lock those in together and I'll increase the size together because if I know the sphere is the same in all these, when I increase it by 1.414, which is um, the uh, root two, that's what this increases by. That's what makes the crystal spiral, uh, includes this in the doubling sequence. So, you know, here's one, two, four, eight, 
but when you're actually doing the crystal spiral, you are doing root two to get the 1.4, and then you do root four to get this number, and you do root eight to get this number, and that's the next one that creates this steady progression as we go along. So root two is one of the uh, sacred geometers' um, go-tos in, in their work. I, I'm much more not great with the mathematics of the things. I really see the way things uh, work out spatially and you know, work with it in that context, but this is the increasing sizes with these numeric values associated with them. And there are eight total, so we're gonna go up all the way to the uh, eighth, eighth rendition of this. And this is now giving you, when the eight is cubed, that means there are 512, right? Little tiny cubes of this size, three-dimensionally packed in, that big, in this big one right here. Okay, and that's what all of these mean. Um, you know, these are irrational numbers. So in the past, people didn't really like to work with those. But if you go to the two, that means here it is, eight are packed in here and eight are packed in here, even though it's one, but if you took that one and went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that would be that view. So now I think you all might be up to speed and know a little bit about how this is working, but we don't really need to revisit the numbers at all anymore because um, we have these dimensions locked in. So, um, so here's the first um, view of what I was able to do with this. And so I took the crystal spiral, right? That's this one with the square view where it's facing you like this, okay? Now, I, I guess uh, I'll talk about it in, in, in a bit, about that view, um, you know, why you, why the star tetrahedron has always been thought of when you spin that star around, it would be spinning on a point. If you put it flat like this, you know, and then you start spinning it, it's not going to spin too well. So, you know, we're, or if you put it on its edge like this, it's spinning on its edge. So when you take a die, a die and you spin it really fast and you start it flat, it will pop up on its top like this and start to spin around and start to produce a wobble over time when it slows down. So that's this view, and I've numbered these 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's where the arc is, right, going all the way to 8. That's the arc that makes it all the way to this number. That's the arc there. So I knew what those arcs were, and I knew that if I'm basically staying with one edge, you know, as this is rotating around, I'm sticking with this edge and it's going to go to this view, and then it's going to go here, then it's going to go here. But remember, it's getting bigger in size as it goes. That's going to start to create a spiral that's expanding in its size, okay? Because each of those from starting to the smallest are getting bigger each time. So instead of it just going flat, it's going to now have some um, ballooning effect or contracting or expanding effect based on which way it's uh, spinning. So then I said, great, now I can do that in the hexagonal view. So I, let me just zoom in a little bit into the image so we can just look up close at some of these because they're a little far away. So you could see, um, just so you could see what I'm working on, here's the yellow square. And as that arcs over from three to four, it's going from the edge over to the yellow corner. So here it is, three, it's a four. And then it's gonna to go to the five, which is gonna be the, the green one. So there's the five. So I'm, I'm following that one corner, just taking one edge and saying, I'm gonna follow that edge all the, that one point and follow it all the way around as it circles. So this is the same edge that started here and just picture it turning around like a, like a top going around, but it's getting bigger on the side and you're holding your finger on that one point and going all the way around. So that was the hexagonal view of it. So that's essentially the same crystal spiral in three dimensional shape. And then I was like, well, now that I know that I can look like, if that's what it's looking like, looking down at the top of the point, right? Because that's the top of the point looking down. Now, what does it look like in the diamond view where I'd be looking at it to the side? So if I were looking at you and you were encased in this, 
form, you know, your body would be in this. And I'll show you what that would look like in just a moment. And then I was able to trace and create a spiraling pattern that has this kind of long, wide arcing spiral that will continue around and kind of get wider and slower, wider as it goes up and around like this, or kind of condenses back in. And I'm following, right, from seven to eight um, back over here, which is this, uh, it's on the back side of this view. So there's a point, there's one, two, and then the back point of that is back through this way, through there. So it's coming around behind it. Okay, but this would be the front side, the five, where it crosses at five. That's as if the cube is pointing towards you now. So you'll see it here. And then on the other one, it was facing back behind you and you weren't able to see it. So now you can see that there's this twisting spiral. And if there's a, it's around the cube, sometimes you're going to see it if it's solid. And sometimes you won't. But this is an invisible cube. So you're able to kind of look at the spiral and see through it and see that twist. So that... Um, that shows the, the spiral and how it flows from each of the corners, just rotating clockwise around. And essentially, we just took the crystal spiral and turned it into a three-dimensional view. And at the same time, we're able to rotate it to a hexagonal view and the diamond view. And now all of a sudden, it opens up a whole new realm of possibility if people who have been working with this spiral um, are thinking of um, contemplating it more or using it in your visualizations and your ascension process. Uh, I think you might find this really useful and I'll continue to go to see what else might uh, be gathered from this because this is really, I think, the most, one of the most interesting uh, elements of what I was working on here. I didn't expect this. And remember, here is the spiral that I uh, have named, I'll tell you what that is in a moment. The spiral's going around, and this is the same spiral here in white, uh, in blue. And when I've taken that out of that, and I brought it over and compared it to the Fibonacci spiral, remember, the crystal spiral was supposed to be the one that was saying that the spiral that many people have worked on, the phi ratio and all that, is the fib of no chi meaning prana, energy, the fib of no chi, right? And it was like this, um, this barrage and attack against this. And then all of a sudden I said, wow, what, what do you think if all of a sudden that hexagonal view spiral that I just created with the same crystal spiral, the one that is the, the new way of a new spiral, you know, of life. What if it from this view, because I've never seen anybody look at it from that view that I'm showing you right now, what would you bet that it turned out to be very closely following the Fibonacci spiral, which also closely follows the golden spiral? Now, the Fibonacci spiral is the closest spiral we have to replicating nature's golden spiral, okay? Because Fibonacci spiral is just a mathematical formula, and nature follows it closely, but not all the, not 100%, because the golden spiral is the exact replica of that. And this spiral, I don't have, you know, I, it, it's closely, it could be touching upon golden spiral at time. You know, it's following nicely along what the golden spiral is. Now, remember, this is now the crystal spiral actually producing the Fibonacci spiral look from that other view. So if you're into the crystal spiral, and I think it's fantastic because I wouldn't have discovered a lot of this. And the beauty is, is yes, it does start at the zero point and I'm doing it all with the binary sequence. And yes, it doesn't throw out the phi ratio and it doesn't throw out all the, um, the, the golden spiral and even the Fibonacci spiral. You know, it's, it's all connected. It's like a middle way kind of coming together. And um, I don't think we need to get into like um, a spiritual uh, warfare with, uh, you know, with our same uh, family around, uh, whether there's, uh, there's this uh, Metatronic uh, downfall that is, you know, putting out all this false information. Maybe we just haven't been able, people are looking at the crystal spiral, maybe we just haven't seen it from the perspective that actually means that it is actually all unified, that it is a whole, right? And uh, that 
that is really something to consider. And I think that this is, um, I hope some folks who have studied the crystal spiral who know a lot more about the, um, the language of it that's used in the spirituality chime in more um, because this will um, um, create some stimulation and conversation around uh, the differences between the two and maybe a harmonization around the two and say, hey, we're not really talking about different things. There is a more unified um, spirituality within the sacred geometry than, uh, th than, than we're starting to polarize, you know, with the two views. And, uh, and maybe it's more like you're, you're looking at uh, an elephant's tail and thinking it's the trunk, you know, but it's all the whole elephant. So that's um, a little food for thought. And um, so here we are, and this is now back to the human being in the crystal spiral. I'll zoom it in just a little bit again. And now remember, I was saying before that, uh, you know, if we have that spiral that is um, <clears throat> based on the flat view, then it will look like this and it will come up like that. And but if you if you put it in the diamond view, and this is now remember, there's a star tetrahedron in this shape. The uh, cube right in every cube, there's a star tetrahedron. So that's uh, the star tetrahedron pointing up. And if we put that around the body with the crystal spiral in its actually uh, orientation that follows the same numeric sequence in the cube view. Well, then this is now what we have if we center that on the heart space. Then that is now your expanding cube in a star tetrahedron with a north and a south rather than trying to spin your energy field on its flat part, right? Or, or on its base. Now you've got oriented, so all that's gonna spin just like, just like this, right? Rather than like this, okay? Or like this. So this is the orientation and this is how that spiral will start to be produced. Now, you know, where's the one that closely followed the golden spiral? Well, this doesn't actually then create the golden spiral look. I mean, maybe it would create the ram's horn look that we see. Um, I have to look into that. It might actually loop back and create a very shallow spiral around the, the loop of the horn um, in the nautilus shell and things like that. And, you know, here is the, um, you, know, you see, this is what I mean with this. This, this is called the, the Metatronic Death Star Harness, which they're calling the Fibonacci Spiral. Okay, well, so here, take this in, right? So here is the crystal spiral that was in the hexagonal view that I showed you in the previous slide. And, you know, here's their crystal spiral, but it's almost like you're comparing kind of like apples and oranges when you do crystal spiral versus Fibonacci spiral, because maybe you're not actually looking at the crystal spiral from the same view. So here it is. If we take the crystal spiral, right, and place it right over top of where the uh, Fibonacci um, spiral is, there it is. So now we have, you know, we have to just cross this out because it doesn't make any sense. It's the same spiral, it's the same crystal spiral. It's built on the same mathematics. It's not this Metatronic Death Star Harness. I don't know what that's about. Um, it's pretty much closely following that spiral, but here's the difference. The mathematics are different, right? The mathematics are different. They're actually following the, um, the, the mathematics of the crystal spiral, which always connects it back to the zero, right? And I think that's fantastic. You know, Fibonacci, when he developed that, he basically was thinking about population dynamics, the Fibonacci sequence. He was just counting rabbits to see how, how much a population would explode over time. And he came up with this equation that worked, you know, and taking the previous generations and adding them together, and it's kind of consuming itself as it goes. But the mathematics for this, I think I gotta go back to this slide. Uh, where did that slide go? The mathematics for this one. Yep, see this is the mathematics for this one. Instead of it following that, they're always going back to zero. Um, and then one, 1.414, 1 
you know, that's group two. And then they're going on and they're following that. And that's essentially what's producing a spiral that follows very closely to the Fibonacci spiral. So that's really cool. You know, that's a really neat discovery that uh, the crystal spiral and the Fibonacci spiral are looked at from different angles uh, may be the same thing. So that is the uh, view from that. So now when you're looking at this spiral, you know, we can take, you know, I'm gonna just do this in a very simple way, but if you wanna have, and I could make this a lot bigger, there's no reason I need to stop here, that spiral can keep going bigger, but that's just, maybe I'll do some of that at another point. But if you can continue that spiral as it goes around and then kind of can come up from the bottom here like this, it will follow in the same arcing pattern and now kind of go through the heart space. And now you can have that kind of um, the spiral circling up into it and then reversing itself and then spiraling up and out on the top. And you can have both those happening at once and both those energies collapsing down into that zero point, which some folks, you know, some, you know, what, what I even say is that that tiny space in the heart, right? That zero point space in the heart that connects you and everything else to every other place or your pineal glands is another focus point or any of the main chakras, which are all manifestations of these spots. So, and really literally any point in space is this zero point. This is, this is still such a, a simplistic view than what I, what I envision in terms of how much the spirals are moving from every point in space, all collapsing and radiating out from zero point in every single space and point. So essentially, when you get to that point, it's like there's no point where that zero point or God is not in anything, any place, any space, if this is all a manifestation and creation of, a, of, a, of God. You know, if we want to just say a name to something that is unfathomable, mistress, omnipresent, omnipotent, or whatever your belief in source is, this would be a kind of view of it. And of course, that's still a very simplified way of looking at it. So we have um, everything kind of collapsing down to the zero point within all of space, everywhere throughout this human being, but we do have these major resonatory centers along our chakras, our chakra system. So we've got um, major points within our body that are bigger conductors of these force points that flow through us, and they're connected to the seven rays, et cetera. And I thought it was cool that there were seven of these multicolored um, uh, cubes that came out here with one in the middle. So I'm gonna have to do some more follow up on all that. Um, but as you can see, this is how it quickly starts to go into the spiritual concepts and why um, the people who are really, in, really serious about, you know, their evolution as a human being into, you know, 2.0 version or 3.0 or living in a 5D world where you're, you're upping your, um, your, your base materialistic experience to a, ver to a being a spiritual being, having a material experience. And all these forms and images are what really start to resonate and mean something to you on a felt sense, visual sense, energetic level, however it manifests for you. It's all part of that awakening process. And these spiral forms are part of that process and the cubes and spheres and all that. So let's back out here just a minute. Um, Got to change the size of this slide for you. Now, when I uh, was working on this, I said, well, hey, you know, one of the things that really got me was when they look, the, the, the spiritual ascension community was more or less saying, oh, the flower of life. Well, that's the daisy of death, right? I was like, huh, really? Okay, well, let's take a look at this now. Put up flower of life and basically the concentric circles that are overlapping. And here, this is all the way out to the fruit of life, okay? The yellow spheres or 13 circles make up the fruit of life. Now, this is the crystal spiral, right? That is um, how I've designed it. Uh, 
you know, how it's not designed it. I mean, how it's been basically revealed to me based on following the mathematics and the size of those cubes. This is how it presents itself following closely to the kind of golden spiral, Fibonacci spiral as we're going around. And I found it really fascinating when I superimposed the smallest cube, right? The last cube in that. I placed that within the spot that you would find it on the flower of life pattern or the fruit of life pattern. So I placed that in the middle and then I just said, well, what will happen if like with the rest of the cubes as they expand and got bigger, right? So if we follow that out, right, the first cube, of course, because I placed it that way, connects right on the one, and then it's midpoint here, and then it hits this point here, and then it goes right here, and then it touches the outer edge of the seed of life, right? That includes these six circles uh, that are overlapping on the inside of the yellow ones here that go to the center point. So in here is the seed of life. That's where it meets the orange hexagon that we're looking at here, okay? So it touched that point. Okay, well, let's go a little bit further, right? So here we are, we're taking this crystal spiral all the way around again, and bam, where is it hit now? Oh, well, how about on the flower of life, okay? Right at the 19 circles. So these are 19 circles in here that make up the flower of life, the one and the six, and then the outer grouping here that uh, add up to 19 total. So that spiral just flows around. There's no, there's no daisy of death in following this mathematic process out. It's just the viewer looking at it. It's the flower of life. It's following the pattern. And then as we continue further on, where does it next go? Oh, it goes right to the fruit of life, right? Right on uh, the, thir the 13th sphere here, okay? And then it's going to continue on. And, you know, there's pre pretty much once we have the fruit of life, we've got all the platonic solids. We've got everything we want. And that only took, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, uh, but it took five, five iterations, you know, five movements to finally get out till we get to the fruit of life. Now, in the past, I have been calling the fruit of life, um, the, and this fits into Metatron's cube, right? Because once we get to the fruit of life, we draw Metatron's cube, and then we're able to draw all the platonic solids and many other forms. And in earlier videos, I was quite excited in the middle of the summer, I was talking about Metatron's Tesseract, right? Well, Metatron's Tesseract is part of this sequence too, right? Because remember, now that we're doing the doubling sequence, we're using a different mathematics and we're using a spiral that starts at the zero point. So there's definitely something to the crystal spiral in that point, but we don't, in my, in my view here, we don't need to throw out all this other fabulous um, icon iconography that is pointing to a holistic universal pattern. It's all part of it. And Metatron's Tesseract, which um, is what I call this, is, the cube, right, the green cube that we touch the fruit of life on, which then touches the orange cube, which is the seed of life um, right in here. Remember, this is the seed of life point where it's encasing those six squares. So you're able to, let me ungroup that so I can show you. This little cube here, the orange one, if I can ungroup it again, <laughs> one more time. Yep, there we go. So the orange one is the same size as one of these um, corners, right? So you can pack now eight cubes in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around, and it will equal the same, that cube will equal the center cube, right? That's what the Tesseract means and what the Tesseract is. And I call that Metatron's Tesseract on my previous videos, and here's the spiral that's part of that process now. So this is what I call this, Metatron's spiral, okay? And I know it's based on the crystal spiral um, and the dynamics that are part of that, and I, we can easily call it Metatron's crystal spiral, um, but it's still combining with all the, all the star tetrahedron and all the cube dynamics, and it's basically a spiral that is following an expansion of Metatron, of Metatron's cube. It's following the expansion of that cube. So in my mind, this is 
Metatron's crystal spiral, Metatron's spiral, and that's what I'll be calling this one. So once again, um, just to kind of revisit the major point, I guess, in all this is uh, these, this spiral is the same as these other two spirals from a different viewpoint, from a different perspective, from basically from a different uh, angle that we're looking at the same cube, okay? Now, the only way I could see that that's not working is if we really are calling the crystal spiral a flat 2D square, which means it has, doesn't have dimensionality, and that that spiral then just follows a repeating process of following squares to go bigger and bigger squares, which is a flat world, is a flat earth. And I know, I know people are into a flat earth concept now too, so maybe that will resonate with some people. Um, but if you're into a holographic 3D view that relates to the expansion of uh, the cubes inside cubes inside cubes, which are small cubes in every point of space and larger cubes at all size from galaxies to the entire universe from the expansion from the point of nothingness to everything, then you're more or less going to be dealing with these, the same spiral, but it's going to be creating very closely still following the golden Fibonacci spiral, which I've showed you in the video. And if we turn that into this diamond shaped view, we see it looking like this more uh, squish spiral from the top, but nevertheless still expanding and getting larger and getting bigger and bigger. And we're just looking at it from different views. So Metron spiral, if you just reposition it, uh, the crystal spiral, it will produce a Fibonacci like golden spiral as, as seen from above. So that's this view, right? Very similar to golden spiral. And that is, um, you know, what this, uh, this exploration of uh, all the cubes, all the spheres um, that I've been working with in other contexts. And um, yeah, so all the cubes, all the spheres, um, all the different types of spirals, the crystal spiral was a really uh, fantastic addition to gain some new insight and in looking at that. And sometimes it takes a, a fringe component of people to start to explore something and really make it, uh, make some noise around it to look at it and bring it into some of the other previously existing knowledge that we have and see how it overlaps. So um, I'm really thankful that I had the uh, opportunity to um, engage with that. I hope that you may find some meaning in that, in, in this. And if you have any um, questions or comments or insights about it, um, then I'd be I'd love to hear it in the comments below. And, uh, you know, in the future, I'll uh, probably come out and do a little bit more with the, how that all relates now to these uh, burdock explorations. But for now, I'm just going to keep it at the crystal spiral. So I'm wishing you all a fantastic day. Much love to everyone. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.